You know what I really love? A good IPS panel. So when Philips said they've got the brand new 288 E2 UAE up for review, I was very much intrigued to put it through its paces. Not only because it has an IPS panel, but it's also one of the least expensive 4K panels out there on the market, which makes it quite intriguing for not only people who want to get a 4K panel, but those people who might be looking at a photo or video editing grade monitor that is relatively inexpensive in comparison to what else you can find out there on the market. Now the monitor is available in two variants. The UAE model that we've got on review here has a built-in USB hub. If however you don't need it, then you can find the non-UAE model, which is a little bit cheaper. So it's around 280 to 290 pounds, depending on where you source it from. And of course, prices can fluctuate. Now before jumping into this detailed review, if you do have Instagram or Twitter, I'd very much appreciate a follow. And furthermore, if you're interested in keeping up with the channel itself, definitely do subscribe and hit that bell notification. If you want to keep up with the latest news or reviews on all electric or hybrid vehicles, you should definitely check out Totally EV, where effectively I'm reviewing a new car every single week on the platform. So jumping straight into the specs, the monitor has a resolution of 3840 times 2160, so that's 4K running at 60 Hertz. It has an IPS panel if it wasn't obvious already, and has got a 28 inch form factor. In terms of inputs and outputs, it's got a singular HDMI and DisplayPort input. It's also got a 3.5mm jack headphone output. And in this model, the UAE model, you've got four USB 3.2 ports. And of course, in order to connect that, you have got a USB Type A to USB Type B 3.2 cable included within the box. Now elsewhere, the monitor has two 3 watt speakers built in, and truthfully, they're pretty poor sounding. I wouldn't really resort to them for serious music listening or anything like that. Of course, for basic notifications or basic, let's say, um, Skype calls or Zoom calls, it's perfectly fine. But if you're interested in audio, then I'd very much suggest getting some headphones or indeed, let's say, a set of bookshelf speakers, which will give you a far better experience. Now, to round off the specs, the monitor has built-in AMD FreeSync technology, which is going to be useful for AMD graphics card owners, but we're going to touch upon if it works or not when it comes to NVIDIA G-Sync as well, further down in this review. Now, as for the build quality of the monitor, it has a three-side borderless design, which is is actually really nice. At a 28 inch form factor it doesn't really feel it in terms of at least on my IKEA Freddy desk. Furthermore the stand is well semi adjustable. You've got height and tilt adjustment while you can't pivot and rotate it. I think this will suffice for most people. Now moving on we've got the OSD and straight away you can see you've got the game setting. We'll touch upon this in a little bit but this is what I would classify as my best setting. Then in terms of low blue mode it's got it enabled. You can enable it if you wish. Go through the different inputs and have it as to auto switch if you so wish as well. And in terms of the picture mode you can see I've got brightness of zero. That's just for the camera to pick it up properly. But in terms of the other settings you probably want to leave them as default. It's got PIP and PBB mode if you want to enable them or use them. Now as I mentioned it does have built-in speakers, they're not particularly good, but you can have them in terms of different audio sources, so via HDMI if you are connected, in my case I'm connected over DisplayPort, you can mute it and you've got the volume control. As for the colour temperature, you've got the three modes to choose from, and in terms of colour temperatures themselves, you've got a variety of different ones as well, so that might be applicable to certain individuals, however 6500 Kelvin for most will probably suffice and we'll touch upon picture quality in just a bit. Then you've got the OSD settings, USB settings and then the setup in terms of resolution notification if you so wish and a little bit more information as to what refresh rate you're running on. And now we get on to image quality and here is where I feel the Philips monitor really shines. Now lobbed with its sRGB color profile through the OSD which will limit brightness and we'll touch upon in terms of brightness in just a bit. What you'll see is that the monitor hits 98.8% in its sRGB gamma coverage and 104.3% in terms of gamma volume. As you'll be able to see here, this means that the colors are slightly shift in terms of a warmer tone, where it's not quite hitting the green standard as much as it should do. Now when it comes to color accuracy, it completely blew my mind that this monitor had an average delta E of 1.02 and a maximum of 2.38. This is not calibrated and this is out the box performance, which is again insane for a relatively inexpensive monitor given the fact that we are talking of a 4K IPS monitor over here. 
So the fact that Philips have paid attention to detail in this domain is certainly something that sets it aside and means that this monitor can be used for professional video and color editing, which isn't the same that could be said about other 4K panels specifically at this price range. Now in order for you to get that fantastic sRGB color performance, what you'll have to do is lob it in its sRGB color profile through the OSD, and in this respect it will limit brightness to around 170 nits. Now if you were to take it out of its sRGB mode and put it into user mode, what you'll find is the color accuracy drastically drops. Here I had it tested at an average delta E of 2.25 with a maximum delta E of 5.93. So therefore it's not going to be as color accurate and of course you can get around this if you have your own color calibrator and where to calibrate the monitor in user mode instead of using it in sRGB mode but it's something that I really do want to point out in this respect that you are limited in terms of brightness. Now this really does lead me on to in terms of its overall brightness and in terms of peak brightness it's actually relatively disappointing at around 260 nits. Minimum brightness sits at around 80 nits, which means that it's not too bright and neither is it too dim either. I wish that Philips had addressed this by adding a little bit more in terms of overall peak brightness and also the fact that we haven't got any inclusion or support for HDR, the HDR standard, so it's not HDR10 compliant, means that it might be a little bit of a put off for some people, specifically those people who are going to be using, for example, for their consoles. As for brightness uniformity on my panel, and I know this is completely panel lottery, it was average, it wasn't that bad, it seemed to fail a little bit at the bottom right corner, and in terms of backlight bleed, you'll be able to see that my panel was wasn't that great along the edges, however it's acceptable at this price point. This is where you will see the benefit of purchasing a more expensive, well professional grade 4K monitor whereby you will be treated with perfect uniformity and pretty much little to, well, minimal backlight bleed, which isn't the same that could be said about this Philips monitor. So now we get onto its gaming performance, and I have to say that this monitor isn't a gaming grade monitor, purely because it's got a 4K 60Hz panel, but nevertheless this might be of interest to console gamers, or indeed casual or those people who don't really care of getting really high frame rates when it comes to PC gaming. Now in this respect the monitor does have AMD FreeSync technology built in and while I couldn't test its AMD FreeSync capabilities I was able to test Nvidia's G-Sync technology because I've got an RTX 2080 Super and when connected over DisplayPort I was able to run the Nvidia Pendulum demo and didn't see many problems. There were slight stutterings when it came to lower FPS's but this is no surprise given this monitor is capped to 60Hz and therefore it doesn't have an expansive VRR range. Now truth it wouldn't be a totally dubbed review if I wouldn't put it through its paces when it comes to competitive gaming. And in this respect I went on Counter-Strike and tested to see how its input lag would fare. And truthfully here I didn't find it that impressive. No surprise given again that it's not a gaming grade monitor, doesn't even have a low input lag mode to select on or off, and in this respect I did notice that there was a little bit of input lag. Is it super severe? No. Is it acceptable? Yes. Can you play competitive games on it? No. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of its input lag. As for its response time, the monitor is actually not too bad. While you will get a little bit of inverse ghosting on the fastest response time setting, as for the fast mode, I think it will give a perfect blend for those casual gamers out there. Or for example, if you're gaming on console and you're not really going to be hitting over 60 hertz, for example. What I'm ultimately trying to say over here is that the monitor isn't a gaming grade monitor and shouldn't be used for competitive gaming in the slightest. However, for those people who are going to be using it with a console, or for example, for those people who are using it on a PC and not going to be playing any serious competitive hardcore shooters, then what you'll find is that the monitor is perfectly acceptable in this domain because its response time is fine and its input lag, well, it's again acceptable if you're going to be using it in this domain. 
I can't stress this enough, if you're going to be using it for competitive gaming, then expect poor input lag and a response time that really won't compete with a gaming grade monitor. So on the whole, what do I make about this Philips monitor? Well, I really like it because it's a 4K IPS panel that comes in at a relatively inexpensive price for what you're getting. You're getting a really nice sleek design, you're getting a stand that can be moved around, and furthermore, you're getting a really color accurate monitor in its sRGB performance. Furthermore, in terms of gaming credentials, it'll be perfectly plausible for a lot of people out there who don't take themselves as competitive gamers. So as a result, I really think this monitor is a best buy and I would very much actively recommend it for anyone that's looking at a class leading IPS panel for photo or video editing or indeed just browsing the web and enjoying 4K, well glorious 4K resolution. So that's just my thoughts and opinions about it. I'm very much intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Of course, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification to keep up with the channel. And of course, favorite and share if you feel that this video will be helpful to a family and friend making an informed purchasing decision. I've been totally dubbed. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.